Hello, hello, hello. This is Nick Ritter back uh, with another video about cavalry. This one's about my opening animation, this little logo I put together. So I, I figure I'll just go through this project, try out this format. Let me know if you like it or if you just want to see things done from scratch. This one took me a long time though, so it would be, it could be quite a long video. Okay, so let's watch through it again. We got the square that comes out, it bursts open into triangles, the triangles spin, and then cause the square and circle to pop in at the end. I think the best way to do it is just chronologically. The square animates the size, not the scale, but the size. That way you can maintain the stroke width. I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. Changing the scale, I'll just change the X here. So if you change it enough, you start to see the difference where the left and the right strokes are super wide. Then if you scale in, then the lines get shorter. This just doesn't look very great, or at least that's not the aesthetic I was going for. But there's a little tip that I got after doing the last video where you can alt click on things like position or scale where they're related fields. So if you alt and then click there, then you get two keyframes for like, in this case, the scale X and scale Y, but that was useful for me with size W, size H. Then of course the rotation, lots and lots and lots of easing there. It still scales up for a couple of frames and then it's still for a couple before it finally pops. Wanted to create like a stretching rubber band sort of effect where it finally hits its capacity and then it bursts open. An interesting thing to note also is the time editor. I have one layer of the square and in cavalry, you can turn layers visibility on and off while maintaining the same layer. So in this case, I have the square here at the beginning, this red bar here, it disappears and then it comes back at the end. And even behind the scenes, you can see this green boundary box. It's animating to the next position where it needs to be for when the triangles hit. I'm not sure if this is the cleanest way to do it, but that's what I did and it, it works really well. To split a layer like this, all you have to do is right click, click split. And then to put the layers back together, you'd click and drag one of the sides on top of the other. And then it just like stitches them back together. And then next we have the burst of the triangles. I'll go over the burst though. The burst has a few interesting things. So I'll hide the shapes and here's the burst. You can click these little circles to pull open the attributes with your keyframes on them. You can also just click the arrow. Two ways to do it, I guess. I animated the burst line horizontally at first. Get rid of that. Just animated the one line. And then I set up the burst, which is just the duplicator on the shelf which comes in handy if you want to use like one animation multiple times or similarly one animation multiple times. I probably could have just copied and pasted the layer, but I'm in cavalry, so why not get a little fancy? So here's our duplicator, called it burst. Set the distribution to circle, uh, use rotation. I set that so that way it points out away from like the center of the circle. I uh, set the count to two. And so now we just have a burst that pops out like that. And then this uh, ellipse shape here, I have kind of like with square, I'm animating the radius and not the scale. That's so that way I have total control over the width of my stroke. I do animate the width of the stroke as well. So it comes out and gets thinner until it disappears, just like a little ripple effect. So far, pretty straightforward stuff. And that's honestly most of it with a little bit of cavalry goodness sprinkled in. So that's the burst. I got these to spin around by, I got these triangles to spin around each other by putting them in this tries group and then animating this rotation here. I also ended up animating the rotation of each of the triangles so to make sure they're in the right orientation by the time they completed their rotation. So it looks like the triangles are coming closer together just because of the way that the triangles pivot point is set up. The pivot point's like not in the center of the triangle and so as it rounds the pivot point, they get closer together. I went back and forth on whether or not I wanted motion blur, but especially when it gets super fast like this, I actually think the motion blur helps orient the viewer on what's going on. So these triangles finish spinning, stick there for a couple of frames. That was kind of the MO this whole time is like one movement happened, wait a couple of frames. The next movement happens, wait a couple of frames, and so on. A little anticipation movement and then straight down. The next part is the circle. I didn't do anything fancy with having like offset animations or anything. The, the triangles move first and then the square and the circle move right after. It's like one or two or three frames here. But I didn't do anything fancy there, just manually 
keyframed it like I usually do. This ball has this squash and stretch effect. And unlike the other shapes though, I used scale. So let's pop into this circle and see what's going on. I just moved the pivot around until I saw this little pivot circle icon right at the bottom of my circle shape. So that allows it when I change the Y scale to squash and stretch from that bottom point. At this point in the animation, it was like four in the morning or something. I was just wanting to get it finished. I know there's a way to still accomplish the same effect with the radius height, but I figured it's not moving that much. So I think I can just get away with it. With this one, you'll notice that I only have a couple of keyframe bars. And I used this trick on my last video with the bar graph. All it was is you select your keyframes, you right click them, magic easing, small spring out is the one that's already selected. So. If I select even both of these, go over to the graph editor, I scale this guy up, you can see the spring effect between the two, uh, width and height. That's super nice. I love the magic easing. I hope to see it develop more and allow for maybe some more customization, but honestly it works super well out of the box. You might notice right here on impact, the stroke gets super big around all of the shapes at the same time. Well, this was done with just four keyframes here. So going from normal size to big and then big back to normal size. I open up stroke width, look at this value of 24. So if I click this purple arrow, I can see everything that that information is piped into. It goes to the square that makes up the, the N letter, the outline of the R, the mat of the R, all these different shapes. It connects to make sure the strokes are all the same across the board. So that way when I animate the stroke, I just have to do it once. I find that technique even useful when you're just doing some look dev just to figure out like, is this the right stroke? And if a creative director is looking at your work, uh, a client or you know someone who's giving you feedback. So something like this allows you to make really quick changes and iterate faster. The last thing I haven't talked about, I totally forgot about it, is the triangle mats. That's how we get the triangles looking like they're coming in front of the square and the circle. Uh, they don't have black fill on them. These are all just strokes. I, I wanted it to work no matter what color or background I put in. Let me open up this folder here. So I've got the triangle mat. I'll turn that on. These are actually gray. So on one of them, I have fill. And on the other one, I have just a stroke. So I did the fill one first. I opened up the shape, went into fill, turned it on, went into stroke, turned it off, drug this little blue dot over to the outline to set a mask. And then on the next triangle, I forgot the fill stroke step. When I turn off the stroke, turn on the fill, but it still works. So here's the deal. For masks, cavalry doesn't count strokes. It only counts the fill. So it only counts the space inside the shape. And that's whether or not you have the fill on. So let's open up the square, go to the mask. I've got both triangles working in front of both shapes. So you can see the square coming through. Oops, I just opened up the mat by double clicking on it. Don't turn off your visibility and turn it back on too quickly. It does not like that. And then I have these set up to subtract. Turn these back off. Here's a little bug to be aware of for the time being. I'm sure it'll be fixed. Is I do have the motion blur turned on for both the stroke and the mat. So double click on the mat and you'll see motion blur is indeed checked. Actually, that was the other triangle. So let me open up the other one just to show you. So this one is also checked, but cavalry doesn't register. I think the alpha layer behind it or something, this part of the square should be showing through a little bit behind the motion blur. Something to be aware of in this version of cavalry, which is 1.0.3. These devs are working like crazy and they're getting fixes out super fast. They're even pulling in new features insanely fast. Like this is blender level 